know what I love, Mason? I'm going to tell you. Oh, okay. Just listen. I was going to say, Sunshine. Do you know what I love, Mason? Spending time with your no, kids. No, you say what? Oh, what? Leaving a like on this video. Second thing I love. Spending time with your kids? Say what? What? Movie mysteries, Mason. Are any of these going to be spending time with your kids? <laughs> but you know what else I love even more than that? What's that? Movie mysteries that actually have been solved. They're not really Whoa. mysteries. There you go. Forget your stupid kids. Let's solve some Whoa, mysteries. Well, no, no. And I love spending time with my kids. You didn't let me finish, Mason. They're yuck kids. <laughs> They're all grotty and mean. They're mean to me. One of them is. One of them's really mean. Anyway, I'll tell me about these mysteries. What I've got here, Mason, I've yeah. got a list of things that are considered like unknowns oh. in cinema. Ooh. Where you look at a thing and you're like, oh my God, what's the secret behind that? I guess we'll never know and whatever. Oh yeah. But these ones, through a bit of investigation, mm -hmm. through maybe a novelization or some interviews with people involved, we've actually figured a bunch of these out. Okay, you know so I mean? these aren't the style of mysteries of like was Rosebud in Citizen Kane. Oh, you just get to the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it not out. one of those movies. It's okay. one of those things in movies that it's left ambiguous, but mm. it turns out it's not ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, let's start with this one. Did you know that Harley Quinn didn't actually assist in the murder of Robin in the Zack Snyder universe? Oh my goodness, but it says it at the start of Suicide Squad, probably. That's right. It's in, in, that, in that text crawl that's too fast to read. Exactly. So what they've done in Suicide Squad, not The Suicide Squad, a movie that was famously chopped to pieces and then they put text over a bunch of it mm -hmm. to explain stuff. It says that... Nitro Hulk... Zeus. Exactly. You know? Just so you know. <laughs> it says that she's an accomplice to the murder of Robin. That sounds pretty definitive, though. Yeah, but if you look at the time... Guilty. No, but if you look at the timeline of it, it turns out that Batman knocked out the Joker's teeth after Robin was murdered, right? Okay, sure, sure, By sure. the Joker. You got those sweet grills. Exactly. But the thing is, when Harley met the Joker, oh, which yes. we saw in Suicide Squad, mm -hmm. he already had the teeth. Oh! So she could not have been involved. David Ayer, the sort of director of that film, mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. asked about this and he said the timeline was changed after filming. So Mystery solved. Mystery solved. Guilty. Stamped with a big guilty. So Suicide Squad just lied. Yeah. Wow. I know. Brutal. You know, sometimes your intel is wrong. That's true. What Amanda Waller's intel? Yes, in this case. Damn. Yeah, damn. What about this one? How did the Emperor survive in The Rise of Skywalker? Yeah, a million spaceships. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he did. But that's not what Oh, led like, him to like, so because obviously... That body in Rise of Skywalker was a clone body? Well, they didn't really explain it. They didn't it. explain it, but the last time we saw him, yeah. he uh, was cackling and shooting lightning. But before that, yeah. wait, after that, yep. in Return of the Jedi, he fell down that shaft. That's right. right? Well, fell. <laughs> he was pitched. I, I was only looking at one side of the screen, so <laughs> okay, as far yeah, as I know, enough. he tripped and fell. But this is according to StarWars.com, which is where I get all my information about mm -hmm. movies I've already watched. When Palpatine was killed on the second Death Star, his consciousness transferred to a clone of his own body on Exegol, but the body was too weak to contain him. This led to Palpatine creating more clones and strand casts of himself in the hopes that one would offer a more suitable vessel for him to inhabit. All this effort ultimately culminated in Rey, the daughter of one of Palpatine's clones. She was the perfect vessel, but her father and mother did everything they could to hide her from her sinister grandfather. That's that's the story. That's the, what happened. Oh, so Palpatine's Rey's parents. Yeah. At least one of them is is a is a clone of the Emperor, not a not like a regular offspring. Correct. Yes. He wasn't like doing it. No, he wasn't doing it. I do know I meant cloning. Oh, yeah, so I guess he was. <laughs> he was doing that aspect of it. So, yeah. Look, you don't always need all the information in the movie, you know? You just want to cut to Poe Dameron and he goes, I, I don't know. Mm. He's here, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we have this explicit surveillance footage of him doing it. <laughs> Everyone gather around. Cloning, to be specific. Yes, that's yes. right. Guilty. Guilty. Beep, 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 breaking news. This is a real news report. Look, it's actually an ad. But I want you to suspend disbelief and go along with me saying that this is a real breaking news story in the middle of this YouTube video for some reason. Beep, 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 beep. There's a brand new audio series that you're just gonna love. Batman Unburied, streaming exclusively on Spotify. If you're a Batman fan, terrific. This will be right up your crime alley. Little Batman reference there for you. You'll get that because you're a Batman fan. And if you're not a Batman fan and you're like, what are you talking about? Well, let me tell you something. This is worth a look. It encompasses suspense, mystery, and horror genres all wrapped up in a mature tale that grapples with questions of identity, morality, and life itself. This is a fresh take on a timeless hero, and the first time audiences will meet this Batman 
in this 10 episode fictional podcast series. I'm always interested, me, the newsreader of this report, beep, 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 on a fresh take concerning this character. And Batman Unburied takes all the familiar elements and twists an all new narrative in exciting ways. This version of Bruce Wayne, you'll quickly discover, is different than what you might expect. Forced to not only save the citizens of Gotham, but also his own mental and physical imprisonment. And if you're like, hey, I know Batman, well, that's great, because let's see if you do. There's a poll in the description that asks a question, how tall do you think Batman is? Now you can look up that answer, but don't cheat, because if you cheat, I'll know, I'm a newsreader. Click the link below to take part, and be sure to check out Batman Unburied, a Spotify original audio series. Listen free only on Spotify. Links below. Do you know that... Uh, God, Dan- we're good at this. We're two for two. I agree. Well, these are all pre-solved, just so you know. Uh, do you have an unsolved one at the end? We can we can just... Yeah, maybe. We'll just knock it I'll out. I'll throw one to you and we'll see what great, happens. Great, great. What about this one? Dame Judy Dench. Her char- Guilty. Yes, but her character of M actually has a name in the James Bond franchise. Oh, now, now, now uh, Bond says, Daniel Craig Bond specifically says... He thought M was a randomly assigned letter. He has no idea it stood for, and then she cuts him off. We never find out, but I guess we do find out. We do find Myrtle? out. Myrtle? Yes. Myrtle McGurtle. Myrtle McTurtle, yes. Oh, Myrtle McTurtle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of the Oxbridge McTurtles. <laughs> <laughs> so upon M's death, you probably remember this, but Bond receives uh, that bulldog, that British bulldog. Oh, I thought you were going to say he, he falls down to his knees and he goes, Myrtle! <laughs> Myrtle McTurtle! McTurtle. <laughs> Go on, he receives a bulldog. Okay, yes, I remember that. And the box reads, if you look very closely, Olivia Mansfield. Oh. So there you go. Do you think that's a reference to anything? Do you think that's somebody Ian Fleming did some cloning with? There's only one thing I know, Mason. Go on. And that's this. Guilty. Guilty. That's Guilty. Funny. We got her. <laughs> we got her. Here's one from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, alternate uh, history Hollywood 60s exactly. situation. Okay. Is it why he has that particular uh, citizen uh, uh, bullhead watch, even though it was uh, manufactured in the 70s? No, but do you know the answer to that? Uh, production error. Yes, correct. Yeah. Well done. No, this is uh, in regards to whether Cliff Booth did a murder on his wife. Okay, sure. Yeah. Because, you know, it kind of leaves it ambiguous in the mm. movie and a lot of people are like, I'm pretty sure this guy killed his wife. Is there any supplemental material that might prove otherwise? Well, there is supplemental material that says he did a murder and oh, I'll explain no. it right now. It's from the novelization. Mm-hmm. So when they were sitting on the boat together, do you remember that situation? They kind of flash back to it. And sure. we see it. He's remembering it happening and he thinks, one, it was a hair trigger. Two, it was more of an instinct than a decision. Three, was it a pull or was it closer to a twitch? Four, it wasn't like anyone was going to miss Billy Booth, his wife. Did he shoot her with a spear gun? Yes. Oh, no. It says the minute Cliff shot his wife with the shark gun, he knew it was a bad idea. Cliff's shot tears his wife into two separate halves, which the remorseful murderer holds together for seven hours, keeping her alive until medical help arrives, Booth keeps his wife talking to distract her from the injury and the couple more or less reconcile after having a seven hour conversation that they could never have in life. Then the Coast Guard shows up. He tries to move Billy off the boat, but she falls apart and dies. It's pretty unambiguous. I think also that's not a spear gun. That's one of those. Remember that Remember that uh, Bond movie, speaking of Bond, where he yeah. shoots that guy and he all inflates and he explodes? Oh, yeah. Maybe that. Oh. Also, how's he, how's he explaining that to the Coast Guard? I found her like this, I guess. Sure, okay, yeah. That's pretty grim, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, guilty? Yeah, for I sure. think so. <laughs> yeah. Now you might but he killed the Manson family, so I guess. Yeah, I guess, yeah. And he's redeemed. Hero! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what about this one? What happened to the Joker after the Dark Knight? Now, oh. Chris Nolan's initial plan. Mm-hmm. I call him Chris, we're friends. Chris Nolan's Chris's initial plans were I call him Sir Christopher Nolan because <laughs> he's got a knighthood in my mind. Yes, yes. His idea initially was to have the Joker carry on over into the sequel, but obviously with the death of Heath Ledger, he wasn't even sure whether he was gonna make a sequel at all. And eventually they probably went, if you make this movie, you can just make literally anything. And he went, All right, cool. And so he did. Can and I make it- something with completely inaudible dialogue? Oh, yeah, I guess so, Chris. Can I do it every time? Yeah, all right. <laughs> so uh, this is from the Dark Knight Rises novelization. So the Dent Act, which came into play after the death of Harvey Dent, made it impossible for criminals to plead insanity. So all of Gotham's prisoners were sent to Blackgate Prison, <gasps> which seems unfair, because I think there were actually some people in there who you know, were mentally ill, my understanding. Uh, anyway, all except for the Joker, who became the sole inmate of Arkham. So the book keeps his ultimate fate vague, 
but hints that he may have escaped, you know, during the turmoil of, of Bane blowing up a bunch of stuff or whatever. Oh, yeah. I vaguely remember And he that. just went, I don't, I don't want to do any of this, actually. Interesting. And he left. Wasn't there also a, p- a, p- a possible storyboard from The Dark Knight Rises where he is, mm. he's, uh, is isn't, he the, uh, isn't he a judge in a sort of trial situation? I have seen that, but I don't know whether it's a like a confirmed situation. Yeah, or some sort of fan art situation. Exactly. In place of the Scarecrow who we got in, in that movie. That's right. Regardless, guilty. Guilty, but free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got out. How's about this? Do you remember the movies Back to the Futures? Sure, I remember all the Backs to the Future. Exactly. People have often questioned, why would Doc Brown, a seemingly 70-plus-year-old man, be friends with Marty McFly, a 25-year-old man in real life playing a 16-year-old? <laughs> I thought this was going to be about Twin Pines more, but uh, this is far <laughs> more true. Because somebody there at the end, there's only one, there's only one Lone Pine. Not more. a lot What's of people might have noticed this. That? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that is a great question. Why is he hanging out? So uh, this <laughs> Either direction, it's weird, right? I agree. Yeah. So this is from Back to the Future co-writer Bob Gale. So his idea is that Marty snuck into Doc's lab and was fascinated by all the cool stuff that was in there. Uh, when Doc found him there, he was delighted to find that Marty thought he was cool and accepted him for who he was, and the rest is history, or to be more precise, multiple histories. Okay, but why'd he sneak in, though? What I think actually happened, I'm going to resolve this, okay. is it's one of those infinite time loop things oh, yeah. where Doc Brown met him in the 50s and so then made sure he met him in, again in the 80s. Oh, perhaps he lured him in. Yes. He lured him into the garage with promises of skateboards and so forth and, and big puffy vests. And dog food bowls that serve themselves. Yes, exactly. That's yeah, right. Yeah, very good. Oh, guilty. Absolutely guilty, Because yes. what is that relationship? Guilty. Guilty, you're both guilty. It's just a couple of bros. I guess it is. Bros of any age can be bros, you know what I mean? That's true, I guess. I declare them bros. <laughs> and the last one we've got here, and i got a few more just going to wrap up at the end, I guess. How did Indiana Jones survive? That's a great question in general. <laughs> sure. But uh, specifically the moment where he clings to the outside of a submarine mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for what could possibly have been hundreds of miles in Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's a great question. You remember James. this, you remember this uh, sequence? Perhaps a long tube? Perhaps his whip is hollow. <laughs> and he can breathe through it? He can breathe through it. It could be, yes. Solved. Guilty. But apparently, if you look at history, in particular the history of that sub, uh, they ran primarily on diesel engines, meaning that they mostly travelled on the surface or just below because the combustion engines had to draw in the air. Oh. So basically, there's a very good chance that that submarine was not submerged the entire time. Oh. Or he just he, he opened the door and, and got in. Is that a thing you can do? Sure, yeah. 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 As opposed to a Vin Diesel submarine, Mm. which moves at a quarter mile at a time. And boy, does it. But yeah, look, I'd love to know if anybody else has any mysteries from movies that perhaps haven't been solved. Oh, it's try and stump us. You can't do it. We'll (laughs) solve them. That's right. We solved all these, apparently. Exactly. You know, people talk about the the spinning thing at the end of Inception. Is he really in a dream or whatever? No, I don't think he is. Because it it waggles. Solved. Here's another one. Cop that, Sir Christopher Nolan. (laughs) I call him Chris. What about uh, Vincent's car getting keyed in Pulp Fiction? Who did that? I did it. It turns out, no, that according to Quentin Tarantino, it was Bruce Willis's character after the bar scene between him and Travolta. It got a bit tense and he went out and just keyed his car. I mean, I suggested it, though. Yeah, you suggested it. You might get some sweet revenge, you keyed his car. Here's one for you, Mason. Go on. Do you think lightsabers eventually run out of energy? (laughs) The answer is yes, Mason. It was in a comic. They run out of energy. Oh, no. You have to get a new crystal. You idiot. You're guilty. (sighs) Yeah. Guilty of doing a great video. Thanks, man. Yeah. You just have to. I've just pictured they just go to a regular gas station. (laughs) Crack open the the end. They just (laughs) stick the Bowser in there. Jeez, the price of bloody crystal fuel or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, the price it's of It's really hurt my hip pocket, you tell you that much. Exactly. My robe hip pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, like we mentioned, if you've got any, uh, please leave them below. And maybe someone else can solve them as well. Who bloody knows, mate? Also, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows in addition to our subscription services like our private Patreon. If you do want to chuck us a couple of bucks, if you want bonus movie commentaries, bonus podcasts, early videos, and the like. That's right. Thanks, everybody. We're leaving. Bye, everybody. Grab that jam. We'll see you next time.